Hello, welcome to this uh, video presentation. In today's lecture I will go through a Dirac notation, which is the form of mathematics that we use to describe quantum mechanics. So, Paul Dirac is an absolute genius. He decided to describe um, quantum mechanics in a new sort of mathematical, mathematical way. So, the main principle with Dirac notation is that there are two kind of vectors. They are called ket and bra vectors. Unfortunately, I don't think that uh, Paul Dirac was a very clever man in terms of, or a very cr creative man, so he simply named the vectors ket and bra because if you put them together, they spell out a bracket. So the ket vector looks like this, where you have a number in between a state and then a bigger than sign. And then the bra vector is the opposite. Like this. So the ket vector, which look like, looks like this, represents a column of numbers. So a1, a2, a3, a4, all the way up to an, which, where n is the number of dimensions that you uh, choose to work with. So it's a column vector. And then the ket, the bra vector that looks like this, is simply a1, a2, and a3, written out in this manner. But what is important to memorize is that these numbers now are complex conjugated. Now we'll get into more de detail what that means in a second. So. What I mean by complex conjugated is that these numbers, they are complex numbers in the first place. It's not always, but most of the time there will be complex numbers. So a complex number is simply the term Z, which we usually use to describe and notate complex numbers. That is equal to X plus I multiplied by Y, where X and Y are real numbers and I is the imaginary term the square root of minus one. So that is i for you. And then a complex conjugated number that looks like this, with a star up here, is simply, it couldn't be easier, it's x minus i times y. Where yet again x and y are real numbers and i is the imaginary term minus one. And if you choose to double complex conjugated number like this, you will simply get the term you started with, x plus i times y. So to, so to describe complex numbers in greater detail, it's helpful to use a diagram. So on this axle we have i, the imaginary term square root of minus 1 as I said before, and on this time we have the real numbers. So if you would take a complex number z that goes in this direction, here it is said, it will go to a height of y and a longitude on this axle, axis of x. So essentially x and y axles. <coughs> so if you drag lines from this, these points, you can figure out with simple geom uh, geometry that this, the length of z is simply equal to, or let's say z squared, z squared is simply equal to x squared plus y squared. And this is very important because we know that z squared is, squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And if you take a complex number, like z, and multiply it by its complex conjugate. Let me just s set my paper into place, I don't wobble around so much with a piece of tape here. Um, if you take z and multiply it by its, com by its complex conjugate, conjugate, z star, you will find the term, we had them before, that z equals x plus i y, and z's complex conjugated is x minus i y. So these multiplied together is simply 
Okay, you guessed it. X plus IY multiply by X minus IY. And if you, if you just adjust the camera as well, if you just solve this equation, you will find that it, it can, these terms cancel out and you are left with X squared plus Y squared. So multiplying a number by its complex conjugate is the same thing as taking that number and square it, as you see. Um, the other thing is, if um, you complex conjugate a real number, you will only be left with that number because in order to, for the complex conjugation to work, that number needs to be, of course, complex. So if you have only two and you complex conjugate it, that's simply just two. So if z equals just two, then the complex conjugation of z is always two. So that is another very important lesson. So these things I want you to take, take in and uh, analyze and remember because these, this comes concept here that z squared is the same as the complex conjugate multiplied by itself is very important in a future, in a future lesson. So let's go through the basic rules of these ket vectors and bra vectors. If you have two <coughs> ket vectors and you add them together like this, a plus b, you will get another ket vector, c, and adding them together couldn't be any simpler, simpler because you know that a is simply a column vector uh, to, to n, which, where n is the number of dim dimensions that you happen to work with. So I will only choose three dimensions, so let's just take two for this example, we'll just, uh, or take three so it becomes clear. So that is a1, a2, a3, and that is b1, b2, b3, and that's c1, c2, c3. So these two added to, together will make c1, c2, and c3, which essentially is just a1 plus b1, a2 plus b2, and a3 plus you guessed it, A3, B3. So it couldn't be any simpler in that regard either. You just add them together. <coughs> so if you have a number, for example, alpha, yeah? this could be a complex number. It does not need to be a complex number. And you put it in front of a ket vector, you will simply just get a new ket vector. So that equals ket vector C again. <coughs> And how you derive this equation is pretty simple as well. You know that this equals a1, a2, a3 multiplied by alpha, which then essentially is this cat vector C, which is alpha a1, alpha a2, alpha a3 multiplied all together, right? So that makes a new cat vector. So what happens if you prepare a bra vector and multiply it by a ket vector? For example, if you prepare a particle in the state A, and you want to measure that particle, the probability, for example, for a particle to a polarized beam of light, that's A. What is the probability for this polarized beam of light to go through another polarization filter B? So you, you set up a system in the format of A and measure the probability for it to go through B. And remember, now these things are the probability amplitude. Um, I will go in, in, into more depth with that later. Uh, the probability amplitude, it just, it's just a term and you need to square the probability amplitude in order to get the probability. So how do you derive this equation? It's pretty simple as well. Um, you need to see that this is a bra vector, so this is the complex, con complex conjugation, which is then simply a1 star, I will work in three dimensions as well, a2 star, a3 star. You do not need to put these things out, it just, make it, make, it just makes it a bit easier for me. 
uh, multiply by um, a column vector, which is b1, b2, let me just take this down a little bit, b2 and b3. So you multiply these things together and you will be left with like that. You will be left with a1 star multiplied by b1 and you guessed it plus a2 star multiplied by b2 plus a3 star multiplied by b3. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment if you think that this video deserved it. Um, thank you thank for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.